Welcome back. Well, you know this month uh, on our Monday movies, it's been a tribute to uh, Gene Kelly, certainly one of the Hollywood legends. And coming up in this community, you can learn a lot more about him. Our guest today is Patricia Ward Kelly. She's been on our show before. Good to have you back. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you very much. First, uh, if people haven't seen you on our show before, tell us uh, about yourself. Well, I, I think we can at least say I was Gene Kelly's wife. I'm known as the third and final wife, and mm -hmm. I was also his biographer. He brought me out from the East Coast to write his memoir and then married me five years into the process. So I recorded him in some format every day for almost 10 years. Wow. And that's been, that was really what helped me to shape the spine of this one woman show that I created that's been traveling across the country and even went abroad last month. So, and that will be here this Saturday, so. It's been quite uh, successful, and I remember having you on a couple times before. So you've been doing the, the show for, what, a year and a half, two years? Two, uh, I started it for his centenary in 2012 okay. and at the Academy of Motion Pictures, and then it went to Lincoln Center in New York, and it, it just That's sort of great. grew like Topsy. I think it's because people see him up on screen mm -hmm. and they love him, but they don't know the many dimensions to this man, and that he spoke Yiddish, and that he read a book a day, and that he read... Latin and he spoke French fluently and he was an economics major and he wow. was studied mathematics and the connection to dance and the connection with sports obviously that yeah. he was this terrific hockey player and baseball player and so it's really fun wow. people leave the the theater and the comment I hear most often is I never knew that about him you know he was my hero but now he's even more my hero yeah and you know you speaking of the the sports connection what you see, we've been, uh, as I said uh, to you, we've been showing his uh, films here, and what comes out in his dance numbers is the athleticism of it. And what impresses me the most is on many of those numbers, his lower half of his body is going a mile a minute, and yet you look at the upper half, and it's just calm. It's just mm -hmm. fluid, it, almost like he's, he's floating. It's incredible. It really is. Well, he was looking for a particularly American style of dance mm -hmm. because there, before Gene Kelly, you had European models. You, you did. had uh, Fred Astaire ballroom mm -hmm. dancing on polished floors. And Gene, growing up in the Depression in this lower mm -hmm. middle class family, said, I want, I want to create something that is a, particular to America. Mm -hmm. and. He looked around and he said, how does the American male move? And there was really no model. And so he did look to the hockey plane of his youth. And if you look at that, mm -hmm. it's the very low to the ground, very broad, wide open steps that mm -hmm. you see in his movement. And, and, and you're right, it, uh, in the upper body, he, he's making it look essentially effortless. And, yeah. and that was his intent. You're not supposed to know that it, that it took quite a bit of work. It's almost as though what um, jazz has uh, is to the American, classic American uh, music, it's ours. His style of dance is ours. It's, it's, I, well, it's so interesting that you say that because that's exactly what it is. It's jazz and, and that was what Gene was looking at, at, at this particularly indigenous art form and how do you create that. Gershwin was doing it with mm -hmm. music, Gene Kelly did it with dance. So that's exactly it. He'd love you for saying that. Speaking of, of, of the way he created that, when he got on to do one of these numbers, whether it was with him by, by himself or dancing with Donald O'Connor, whoever it may be, how much of that process was his and that, was he the choreographer or did he improvise and how did that work? No, it, it's, an, it, it's another good question because Gene, Gene said he choreographed, people think he just got up on stage <clears throat> and sort of wiggled around and created something. A lot of choreographers do that. Gene was very, very cerebral. He sat in a chair at night, much more like a writer than a lot wow. of the contemporary choreographers. And he had a little screen that ran in his head and he could see the dance full figure there. And he would write things down on often on yellow legal pads or on the sheet music. Mm -hmm. and then go in the next day and put it on the dancers and then you make adjustments. He had his assistants and he would work out things, but it was really fully conceived and he choreographed the, the pieces. So, it, it, and he was such a brilliant guy. I mean, his mind was going 100 miles an hour and all through his life and all of our time together. He was just constantly replaying, thinking new things and often the dancers would keep coming back to him and he could see them all in his head. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, when you watch these these numbers, that um, 
the effort that must have got into them. Uh, there, there were no computer effects uh, back then or anything like that. And one of the numbers that comes to mind is the one with Donald O'Connor in uh, Singing in the Rain, where they're doing, I call it the vowels, the alphabet right. one. Moses supposes. And the way they're just jumping backwards onto a chair and then back down again. And I know there were different takes that were done, but probably far less than what's done today in t right. dance numbers. Now they, they take like, we'll do a few seconds, then we'll edit it here into that, not back then. No, well, and Gene, Gene only sh usually shot with one camera, whereas now they shoot yeah. with multiple cameras, uh -huh. and then an editor takes that and tries to piece it together. Mm -hmm. Often you aren't even using real dancers, or you're trying to make them look as good as they can. Gene used one camera, shot head on, full figure, and he, he coordinated, he choreographed to the musical beats, so he essentially said he edited in the can, he edited mm -hmm. in the camera, yeah. so there's no, only this piece connects to that piece, there's no editing of it, it's no changing it. And That's he, amazing. He did say that was, he thought that was the best tap number he ever did on film. It was incredible. Yeah, it's, it's pretty magnificent. Did he keep in contact with all the, the other uh, actors he worked with, uh, Donald Connor, Frank Sinatra, and uh, Frank all these people? was, Frank, when I first moved in with Gene, he said there are two people I would call in the middle of the night. One was the director Richard Brooks who, mm -hmm. in Cold Blood and Lord Jim and the other was Frank Sinatra and Gene said we were closer than brothers and they really were. I think they were these two kind of street kids. Mm -hmm. They were they were a little more like the under underdogs and they were really buddies and really to the end Frank was incredibly dear at the end of Gene's life and and um, and then Donald we used to go out we went out to dinner with Donald and his wife, and it's funny because Donald would tell these incredible, outrageous stories that weren't true, but they were so <laughs> fanciful. And I would, I'd walk out to the car and I'd say, you know, gee, you never told me that story, and she said it's not true, but but at least Donald had such a great heart and yeah. such an unsung. Gene said he was really the unsung hero of of Singing in the Rain. It was extraordinary talent. The the public just didn't buy him as a romantic lead or. Yeah, it really was, uh, and what brings to mind is the scene where, of course, he's, he's dancing on the set and uh, he's dancing up the walls, but the way he could make his face like putty was just incredible, where you make those funny faces and uh, well, that was all, it was great. That was all what he would do. He would, uh, Donald would break up the assistants uh, during ta in the yeah. middle of takes. So how was that scene choreographed? It just all the different props that were in there, going through the wall at the end. It was great. Well, it was it was interesting because as, uh, Donald was always trying to entertain everybody and mm -hmm. make the time pass faster. And he would, if there was a dummy on the set, he'd pick it up and start doing these funny things. And then the next day they would say, well, Gene would say to him, Donald, do that funny thing you did. And he couldn't remember what he did. So Gene put his two assistants, Carol Haney and Jeannie Coyne on it to record what Donald was doing. And then Gene took the pieces and put together the make him laugh number. And at the point where he flips over, he used to do that as a kid in a traveling act with his really? family but he had lost confidence at that point, so they brought his brother back in to train with him to go back over. And I mean, it's just phenomenal. I mean, he's wow. really, he's just. What a time, what an error that was back then. I, I really think that you look at those films and you could tell, yes, they worked hard, but they were just having fun. That's what, that's what comes across to me. Well, you had this extraordinary repertory company. Yeah. I mean, you had all these people under one roof, which you don't have now, but you had great costume people, mm -hmm. composers, yeah. arrangers, these talents like a Donald O'Connor, a Gene Hagen, you mm -hmm. know, somebody who's just phenomenal. And, and you have, you, you just have everything under one roof. And, and, and Gene always said, it, he said, you surround yourself by the best and, and it, it only makes you look better. So he just would always, secure the best people in the field. Yeah, you brought some props here today, and I know in your show <laughs> you um, you often show different memorabilia and different props. I have to ask, what is this here? <laughs> it looks like a miniature walking cane, but what well, is that? Well, it is, it's funny because, yes, in the show I do bring out uh, certain objects that are part of Gene's life, and the show changes each night, so it's different, and different things come out of the boxes, but this is an Irish shillelagh 
and uh, okay. a lot of people put have a gun by the side of their bed in Beverly Hills, but Gene had an Irish shillelagh, so this was oh, his form funny. of defense and stuff. <laughs> so you whack people. Yes, you would hit. In. You would hit people. And these are uh, these for you, socks. Or people what? probably haven't seen no. these. I, I've taken them around, and no one knows what they are. But these are sock stretchers, and uh, Gene would wear the light colored cashmere socks and you don't put those in the dryers so you hang these up and these are size you can read it better than i um, interesting i think i, I kind of remember these in a way the, he, wow, I have ten, dozens, looks like about ten and a half it's dozens of these that would hang up and and then one of the things gene was terribly romantic and people always ask me if he was and it always kind of surprises me because he was to me the epitome of romance and so was, I did the show in Beverly Hills. We sold out last week, and it was Valentine's Day. And so mm -hmm. I was digging around, and I started pulling out his Valentines that he would start leaving around the house at midnight for me. And I found these other notes, and this, this one just happened to be the note that he left for me the day we got married. And it says, this is it. You're stuck. Love, love, love your new husband. <laughs> and then this one was uh, a birthday. Uh, as people will notice, there's a slight age difference between the two of us. And this one says, I'm glad that you've turned 33. Now you're the right age just for me. Um, happy <laughs> birthday and love. So it's, it's very fun. personal thing. Yes. And that's what makes your show so unique. Yes, because you get to see the side of Gene. You not only see how he created things and why and how revolutionary what he did, as yeah. you were saying, this blending of live action and animation, doing these things like dancing with himself before mm -hmm. you ever had computer technology. Yeah. But you get to see who he really was and, and what made him tick and what what compelled him. Um, there was one, there's one thing, this is one thing I just found, um, he loved eggs, and he thought it was a perfect shape, and so he collected eggs in all uh, onyx and marble all around yeah. the world. And to me, that I mean, it's such a it says so much about it him. It does. It really does. And as you can see, Patricia has just a wonderful uh, array of things to talk about, and you can find out a whole lot more in her show that is coming on uh, February 21st to Clubhouse Three. It's being brought to you by the old pros, and there's two performances, uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon or 7 o'clock in the evening, and tickets are uh, 16 to $20. Of course, over at Clubhouse 3, you know where to go to get your uh, reserved seats. I want to thank you for coming on today. Uh, this is absolutely fascinating. Well, it thank really you. Is. And I, Gene would really appreciate your understanding of his work. That's Yeah, great. I wish I, I could have <laughs> met him. So, but thank I got you. to meet you. Well, and I look forward to seeing everyone at the shows because, and I greet people before and I stay after. So I hope everyone will say hello. Great. So enjoy the show. I know you will. Patricia, again, thanks for dropping by and I'm sure we'll see you again sometime. I hope so. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. <laughs>